So today we're going to revisit the cinematic style. Now we did one like this previously on the channel, but that was more for like a, a cool blue tone that worked really well when you were dealing with like cityscapes. But what if we'd go the other way and we found ourselves in an area where we wanted to warm up the image and create a warm cinematic style. So recently I was across in Greece and shooting over there and I found some really kind of interesting streets to shoot on. Um, and a lot of over there is these kind of really tall apartment blocks and all of them are completely different and unique to each other with like loads of different colours. So after taking these shots I thought well what kind of style could I do with this and kind of lent straight into that cinematic. But instead of going for that cool blue tone I wondered is there a way we can move this into a warmer tone. Now what I'm going to show you today is some of the presets that is in my cinematic pack so you can find all of that down in the description. But let's get into it and go through how we're going to create a warm sort of cinematic look and turn this fairly bright picture uh, into something that looks a little bit more cooler like this. So you can see first of all looking at this uh, how I've shot it is a bit overexposed if I hit J on my keyboard. Um, we'll be able to see that the whole sky there is kind of blown out. So we'll have to recover some of those parts, but there's not much actually going on in the sky anyway. So that's going to play with our favor because we don't really want to have any blue in there if we're going to be dealing with uh, these warmer tones that we need to bring in. Obviously, because of that cinematic style, I'm going to try and go for a faded look. I'm also going to try and create a little bit more depth with the light in here. So I'm going to probably look to darken out all of this right side here really brighten up the centre uh, and make sure that some of the subjects that are here aren't, don't get a little bit too lost as well. The greens, I'm probably not going to have any greens poking through and I'll shift all of this over into a warm tone as well. So that's where my mindset is sat going into this edit. Let's start with that basic panel then and sort out some of that exposure that we've got going on. So the first thing that I'm going to do then is go over and just drag that exposure down. I'm just going to keep my image open next to me as well just so I know I'm not gone too far with that. See, that looks better. And already you can see coming out there a bit of mountain in the background as well that was previously kind of lost in with that sky. Uh, so that's looking a lot nicer. So let's just keep that at one at a minute. Going down then, we want to recover a bit more. So let's pull the highlights down. Now, usually with my cinematic style, I tend to go quite aggressive on this. So let's go down right the way to 100 um, over on here but we also want that faded look. So we're gonna go the opposite way with our shadows, try and bring out some more detail in any of these darker patches down the side here uh, and on the subject wearing black there. So we're just gonna pull up those shadows a bit. Okay, so that's looking okay. Now we're gonna do a very similar thing with the whites and blacks. We're gonna pull the whites one way and the blacks the other. Remember, I'm looking for a faded kind of look. Black's gonna help us out a lot with that there. So my whites I'm gonna bring down and then my blacks I'm going to bring myself up on. You can see if I go too far, I just get that real flat kind of image, quite nice and faded. Uh, and that is what I'm aiming for, and I'm gonna bring in some contrast when we get down to the curves tool, so I'm not too worried about losing contrast here at the moment. And if you watch any of my other videos, you'll try and see that these uh, global contrast sliders, I tend to leave around until the very end. Instead, I wanna get my contrast from the curves tool. So that's gonna stay alone from the minute, but I'm constantly thinking like a couple of steps ahead of where I am in the edit. Uh, that way it helps me just make those decisions in the moment. But remember, we can always come back to these things. Okay, so that's looking pretty good now if I compare the two. You see we've brought some of that exposure under control uh, a little bit there. That's looking a lot nicer uh, in our image. Um, what I'm probably going to do is instead of just using the healing brush, I'm just going to crop down a bit on this picture here. So what I'll probably do just to get rid of that last bit up there is go over and grab the clone stamp. It's just my feather a little bit uh, and just go over that section there. And let's just pull that up to match in with the sky just to get rid of that little bit up top there. Good, looking much nicer there. So we've cropped in, uh, we've got our exposure under control a bit more here. Let's now go down and look at the present side. So with the cinematic style, I tend to go and put a bit more clarity into my images. With the landscape, I tend to take away. So for this then, we're gonna go down to clarity and we're just gonna add uh, probably about 20 in. So again, don't wanna go too aggressive because there's just there's so much line work actually going on in here. There's a lot of detail in the image. I'm just really trying to bring out a little bit more sharpness to this, but not to go overboard. So 20, 20 feels about right there then. Uh, same with the dehaze as well then, let's just bring that up a little bit there. 
So you'll find whenever I tend to raise my blacks, I usually raise my dehaze. They are kind of counteracting each other a little bit there. But my blacks are also used to control when I've put too much contrast in as well. The cinematic style, I want the faded look. That's going to be achieved a lot with the curves. But I'm, I also want to see some of that detail in there, see all this line work that's going on. But if I go too far with my clarity, if I put sharpening across the entire thing, it's just going to get busy really quickly. A big part of when I'm doing the cinematic stuff is to mute those colours. So we're just going to mute the vibrancy and we're going to pull the saturation down as well. So I'm going to pull that to around minus 12 just to mute those colours a bit more because you can see there's so many going on in here. And I know overall I want this to be more desaturated. So I'm going to go straight in with those global ones. Now, if there's anything I want to make pop back out, I can do with the HSL sliders down below. But let's tackle the curves tool first. So I'm going to start this off then just making my points that I would usually do for the S. I'm looking at bringing in contrast here. So that's going to mean pulling down the shadow areas. And I'm going to raise my blacks up and you can see that helps give me that faded look. So if I go too far on that there, it looks really unnatural and you've got to find that nice kind of stopping point. So you can see the further I go up when I'm fading this out, it just doesn't look right. It looks way too washed. So we've got to find the nice balance. I tend to just on the cinematic ones, raise it ever so slightly down here. Uh, and I usually put another control point in that way. I can just really tackle the black point at the bottom there. There we go. So that's looking all right to begin with. And then we'll have a look up top. Now I don't want to raise too much again, remember, because that sky was already pretty blown out, but what I will do is the same. I'm going to pull down the whites at the very top there. And just put another control point in for that as well. Now the midpoints are always quite interesting within the cinematic. Again, to help with my dark faded look, I'm just going to drop these ever so slightly. This tool is really powerful to use, like the slightest movements can make a big difference to your image. And this is why I'm, I'm sort of kind of keeping my original open next to me, just to make sure I'm not going too far away from my goal. And they could at this stage as well be taking different snapshots. So you could do a before and after uh, snapshot for this, um, or you can just do what I tend to do, which is periodically go up top and just check what you're putting on is it having the right effect. So we've still got a uh, faded style there. You can see, especially in those like darkest points, that faded look is coming in. If I wanted to raise that even more, it's going to affect those areas, but you can see it just goes a bit too unnatural. So it's fine in the right place for it. Perfect. So let's keep that as it is and move on down now into the HSL sliders and try and sort out some of this color. And we want this to be very warm. So let's deal with these warmer colors first. Now this is going to mean pushing uh, a lot of stuff over more towards the oranges, the red channels, particularly the greens first of all. Let's pull those right the way across into the yellows because I don't really want any greens in my image here. Um, that green channel for me is always the one that, the green and the aqua, they sort of split between those cool and the warm tones. So I'm just going to start there with this and pull the green right the way across. Now that already helps out a lot with these ones here, it just kind of darkens and mutes those tones down. Uh, and this is going to blend with those warmer tones a lot more. Let's keep moving up the warmer tones then. So we'll go to the yellows next. I'm going to push those across as well towards the oranges there. Uh, and then push the oranges slightly, but not as aggressively because this is the color I'm trying to unify everything to is sat around here. Uh, and then the reds as well, just a little bit more towards that red channel. There we go. Now when I'm doing this red channel, the place where I'm mostly looking is over here. So I'm trying not to get too much of like that pink color that's coming out at the minute. So let's just reset that back. Let's drop it slightly. Now, instead of doing my cool colors, I'm just going to come down and look at the saturation on those channels. So the green one for saturation, it's less important in this image, so I'm going to pull that down. Yellows as well then. I'm going to boost my saturation on them because they're my primary colors and the same with the orange. 
So because I'm going for that more of a warm vibe, I'm going to desaturate anything that is usually the cooler colors. My targeted colors, these oranges, then the yellows, those are going to be increased in saturation. That's going to give the entire image a really nice feeling overall. And we're going to come back to the warms when we do the color grading and introduce some more warm tones here. But at the minute, it's about sucking out the cold colors, just bringing in the warm ones. Now, depending on the greens that you've got in your image will depend on how aggressive you will go on that slider there. Um, I've decided to go quite aggressive on that towards the yellows just because I wanted to make sure that there's not much green present in here and it blends in with kind of walls that's happening. Red channel then, see what it's doing both ways. It's kind of bringing in that pink color that I'm not too fond of uh, a little bit more. So I'm just going to drop the red in saturation and I'm going to push this more towards the oranges. Not too far because I still want a little bit of differentiation up here. Now that we've got that set, we're just going to come down and we're going to do the same process with the cool colors. Remember, we're going to desaturate a lot of these out. Aquas and blues, you'll find we don't really have to do too much with them. There's some blue colors in here but overall there's not a lot. So I'm just gonna leave the hues alone on the rest of those ones that, uh, and let's desaturate all of them. Let's bring my aquas down, blues down to about the same place. You can see that's targeted that little bit of blue that was up there in the scaffolding. That's just kind of like sticking out in the image over here, but now it's, it's lost a bit more in the background. And same with these, I'm just going to bring all this down. There's not much of that going on in the image, but just in case there's any little highlights poking out, we might as well tackle them. Right, luminance then. Same sort of thing in that the oranges and the warmer tones, we want to stick out quite a lot. So we're going to boost the luminance on those. Uh, the other ones we're either going to leave alone or we're going to reduce the luminance on some of the cooler colors. Let's go for the green ones first again. Now, because we've muted and taken away a lot of the color of the green, there's not much point in me actually bringing the luminance up on these colors. Instead, we'll get a better effect if we reduce the green color. And this will give you, when you bring down the saturation and the luminance of the greens, this is how you could get like a moody green style in any kind of image there. But it works really nicely for this one. Again, that's going to be your personal choice. Never take all of these settings for face value. Hopefully, you kind of get the knowledge as we're going through this of the decisions I'm making and then you can make the same decisions for yourself. Keep going up then, let's just raise the uh, yellows. And we're gonna raise the red slightly. Now the oranges can go either way, so let's raise them first and lower them. And I'm just gonna see which one I prefer. Now, it looks good raised, but where some of these shadow areas that I want to be quite dark doesn't quite look right, it looks too bright there. So I think what I'm gonna do is reduce the luminance on the oranges, but then I'm gonna go over with some masking layer on just to bring some of that light back into those areas. Okay, and then we're gonna go the other way on the cool colors and we're gonna reduce all of those. So we're gonna bring the aquas down quite a bit. And I'm just looking again at that little square up there. So my greens and aquas were being too distracting. I bring them down and I suck out some of the life out of the image where those little highlights were, keeping my overall feeling like quite warm. Let's just revisit back up to our calibration then. I'm just gonna unify some of those colors. Mostly let's tackle the red channel, push that more towards the oranges there. Um, blue channel, Let's push that towards the aquas, roughly the same sort. I'm just gonna suck out some of the saturation now that. And then finally my green channel there. I think I'm gonna push across to this way. Increase the saturation. So let's just toggle that on and off. Now these should be very very subtle changes that are going on. And again, it's just unifying these warmer colors a bit more. Last thing then for, before we get into the detail side, I'm just gonna introduce a little bit more warmth overall in the image, and I'm gonna bring that into the shadows of the area. So I'm just gonna bring up the saturation on the image, find a nice kind of orange hue, 
probably about there, around the 40 mark. Uh, and then I'm just gonna put my blend in up to full. You can see that increases like how much is going into there as well. Uh, and I'm just gonna back off that saturation. I'm not after anything aggressive here. It's just a slight addition to what's going on. And that's really like the final touch of your colors. If I turn that on and off there, you can see as I pull it off, we've done a good job at unifying these colors, at bringing in some more of those warmer tones, but just that last little introduction in the shadow, it's like put the film over your image uh, and we get that cinematic vibe that we're looking for. Let's move down into our sharpening. I'm gonna use option on my keyboard, hit my mask, and I'm just gonna pull this up. And I'm basically, I don't wanna sharpen my entire image, but I wanna target all of those lines of the building and the scaffolding. So I'm gonna bring my mask up quite high there and then raise the sharpening on it. So I don't wanna hit everything in the image. Again, it gets very busy very quickly, but it's just to crispen it up a little bit more. I'm gonna just toggle both of these on. I probably should have done the lens correction at the very start. And I'm gonna bring in a slight vignette in, nothing too aggressive though. And because of this sky at the top, I'm gonna to raise my highlights right the way up because I don't want anything dark to interfere here and look a bit unnatural on the vignette. Okay, so the image is looking good. Last kind of tweak, I'm just gonna come back up to my basic uh, panel up top here. I'm just gonna introduce a little bit more contrast globally. Pull my blacks up a little bit more as well. Just tweak that. So. I would usually go through and be a bit more detailed, do some final things, but let's get into some masking just to finish off this image. Okay, so at this point, I'm just gonna get rid of my before. And first thing I'm gonna do then is just take a linear gradient to the bottom. And I'm gonna get some shadows going in the image a bit more. So I'm gonna bring down my exposure, raise my contrast slightly on that too. Uh, and then I'm gonna do a similar thing, but with a brush here. So I'm gonna take a brush, bring down the exposure, and I'm just gonna brush over some of these darker sections. Thinking about where my shadows are hitting over here as well. So I'm gonna have some darker sections there. And I can see right in the distance too, just underneath that, and a little bit underneath there. So anywhere I think there's gonna be a little bit more shadows, I'm just painting this in. This orange bit we said before, it's a little bit too aggressive, so I'm gonna put that in too. And I'm just gonna back off on that exposure slightly. Decrease my blacks there. A bit more contrast. Fantastic, now we can see the subject's getting a little bit hidden there, so I'm just gonna select my subject, pray, the AI does the right thing here. Let's have a look and see. Okay, not bad. Let's just go in, take a minus burn, take a brush. I'm just gonna get rid of the bit that's highlighted that he thinks is the subject. Okay, we click back in and let's raise the exposure of our subjects, a little bit more shadows and a bit of clarity as well. Now I might, if I want to be even detailed, like go in and use the curves tool a bit more, but that's fine for this. Let's just raise clarity, um, exposure slightly more on that. Good, now the final thing is, let's paint in a little bit of light so I can see my light source there. So I'm just gonna bring a radial gradient, angle that across, pull it down into place, a little bit too light. And I'm gonna raise my exposure on this to bring a bit more light back into the image there, where the light source is. And I'm also actually gonna raise my temperature to be a bit more warmer there as well. So I've got some more warmth and more light coming in where the sun would be. There we go. Now I can add a final little bit of detail, which is to take an exposure brush again and just dodge a few of these areas, so a bit more of a smaller brush, and just pick up on any highlighted areas. And I'm being very, very rushed with this, but you can see I'm just going over areas that are already being hit by the sun there. 
Again, be detailed on it, but just for the sake of today, it's just to show you my process. And there we go. So let's toggle off our masks uh, and just see the difference that that has had there. So we had a flat image, bring the masks back in, and you can see that we've just painted that bit of light, created that bit more depth to the image there. So whilst the presets are very, very good at taking you uh, to where you want stylistically wise, for an image to really pop out, make sure you take the time on that last step to do that masking. If you're not sure about any of those others because I've rushed through it, please check out some of my other videos on masking. But hopefully that's given you some a bit of knowledge around some Lightroom editing to create this warmer cinematic style. I find this works really well with these kind of images I've taken where it's sort of a, a street view, it's quite busy, it's very bright, you've got a lot of colours going on. This preset works really well for that, so it's one that I'm going to be putting across to some of the shots that I did there whilst I was in Greece. So I hope this was helpful. Please like, subscribe and comment. I'll see you in the next one.